This is Charter Local Edition. My name is Brad Pomerantz. We are in Riverside today, about 20 minutes from Ontario, and Ontario and the entire Inland Empire has been celebrating because what has happened? Ontario Airport is reverting to local control, and this man, Kurt Hagman, a member of the Board of Supervisors in San Bernardino County, has been instrumental in trying to make that happen. I love the pictures of the whole San Bernardino group celebrating the return of Ontario to uh, local control. Absolutely. It's one of the great achievement this year. And it was a group effort. Everybody from a congressional delegation to all the cities and counties right. have been working on this for a long time with us. But that's the point. You have been working for a long time on this, since I've known you, I think. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering why now? What went right? Why was this moment in time the moment where it happened? You know, when I got elected to the Board of Supervisors last December, it's right. one of my goals to start communications with the so Los Angeles. So it's Kurt Hagman, of course. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping I have some parts of it. No, no, um, but, but we did open dialogue in right. January. Tensions were very high between Los Angeles and Ontario at the time. They were in lawsuits and such. Right. And since I came from representing them for six years, right. we started those conversations over again. And so let's remember, you were the assembly member representing Ontario, accurate? No, at the west end of San Bernardino, so only Chino Hills, but Los Angeles, the east end of Los Angeles, San Gabriel Valley, the north end of Orange County. Yeah, so those people w would use Ontario, but now you represent Ontario? Yes, absolutely. So now you represent Ontario. And I'm on the Ontario International Airport Authority, OIAA board, so I'm one of the five members on that board as well. So give us a sense as to why this was important. Uh, just to remind our viewers, LA World <laughs> Airport, I'll say owns and operates, that may not be the exact word, but LAX as well as Ontario. Correct, and, and, and five other airports. five other airports. So 30 years ago, they started collecting airports, which is kind of interesting because there's no competition when you own your own airports. I understand. And they could direct all the international flights to Los Angeles. Uh -huh. What comes of international flights? All the TOT tax for people staying at the hotels, right. all the shopping. So there's a lot of economy, not just the landing fees when an airplane lands, from the outside um, people coming and staying in that city. So since LA World Airports is a production, one could say, of LA City, Correct. LA City had the incentive to send flights to its main airport, even though they owned Ontario, Correct. because the catalytic consequence would benefit the city of LA as opposed to Ontario. Correct. Or All the trickle down eco right. economic you know, right. factors from that would happen. And I've talked to airlines who said, we cannot get into LA, can we come to Ontario? We were told no to go to Ontario. So these are presidents of airlines, foreign airlines that cannot come to Ontario, even though it's a international airport. Wow. The second thing is the way you play your books on these different airports. You put re retirement over here, you put some personnel over here. <sighs> All those operational costs go to a landing fee. So Ontario went from one of the lowest landing fees in the area to the highest in the nation uh, <sighs> per passenger. So it's not just per passenger, it's per seat on an aircraft. So if an aircraft come in half full, they're still paying $7 per seat for the entire 300 seats Whereas of the airport. Whereas LAX was paying? It was like $354. Four or five dollars, so but a couple a dollars cheaper. Incentive. Yeah, so economics plays a big deal to these airlines as well. And when you don't have the international flights, you lose less domestic connection flights. You have no need. So over the last you know seven, ten years, the decline of Ontario um, airports has been going down with passengers as other airports have increased. And, and no doubt that decline was also made worse, presumably, by the recession. The recession, right. which hit the Inland Empire very hard. And so you had what you describe as some preferences for other airports in the LA World Airports family, and then the recession. Well, most people, when they go online, they sit there and say, well, I live maybe in you know, Brea. Right. I could go online to check LAX, Orange County, and Ontario, Ontario right. and see what the prices are. Long Beach. Yeah. yeah. So if you look at the Ontario, it's $70 more for your flight than Long right. Beach. You're in a Long Beach or LAX. Right. Even though, if you actually think about how long it takes you and park right. there and everything else, <laughs> right, right. you're probably safe to go to right. Ontario. But people look for the cheaper flight. And that's directly related to the landing fees of the aircraft as well. So now what happens? That's the key. Yeah. What happens next? So we've come up with a framework for the deal. It will take us six to nine months to transfer the airport to new management, which is okay. us. Um, FAA, the federal government gets involved and starts making sure we have the right staff that it, do it correctly. Is it public as to what the deal is? Did you have to buy the We're airport? We're buying it back, correct. Okay. And, and that was what the lawsuits were about. What is the value? I see. Um, there's no law, but practice from government entity to government entity has always been cost reimbursement. I see. LA was asking for a lot more. Ontario say it should be anything. You know, uh, and that's you, what, you there were $550 million apart. We settled for about 250 over 10 years. Okay. So it's, it was a good deal on both sides, I, I believe. It's more than what tradition has been. 
But there's a lot of potential at that airport. That's of what course. I'm excited about because there's been no development. We have 1,200 acres around that airport. Really? Yeah. So I already have five or six foreign airlines already knocking on our door. Really? Uh, some of them are offering, we'll build brand new international terminals if we could have you know, preferential landing rights. There's a lot of stuff to work out because there's raw land there. And we're the only airport that can expand in Southern California. Everyone else, you know, LAX is a cap. They're done, yeah. They can't go anymore. Right. You know, on Orange County, Long Beach, everybody else is cap. We don't. So we have a lot of potential for future growth as well. And frankly, the population is growing out here. So, so a lot of excitement. So what are the plans for those 1,200 acres? Do you, to the extent you can say, do we know what airlines plan to come in? How will you link up with Co the Coachella Valley, for example? What's your you sense? Know, the, the, this is all, you know, it's funny because right. we've had an airport authority for five years, but no airport. Right. So right. we're having our first meeting back next week from the board right. now since we have an airport deal. So there's right. a lot more work to do now. Well, of course. But, you know, obviously the first thing you want to do in any kind of project like this is make a master plan. You know, go through what what things the airport needs. Like someone brought up a bonded warehouse. You know, every major airport has a bonded warehouse besides us. Meaning it means when goods come from overseas, they go there without paying import tax if they exit the the, state, the country right. again, or if there's special things. You know, until they get sold, then they get taxes. There's some tax advantages. Okay. Um, you know, you go to duty stores, you buy that stuff without paying sales tax. Sure, of course. That's from the bonded warehouse because technically the airport's not part of. It could be still international. I understand. Part. I understand. So there's some a lot of things like that that I'm still learning. And you know, the first thing on our books is to go find a good airport director, right? Air, executive director, and let them help us guide through the place. How, how does this play into the San Bernardino Airport, you know, if at all? I don't think so. The San Bernardino Airport is a long ways off, probably decades away before passenger travel. Although as Ontario becomes more toward the passenger, right, we can move a lot more of the cargo operations that's right. there right now. We have a big UPS hub. You know, as we expand, I mean, they're projecting in 30 years, San Bernardino County will double in population. Wow. I mean, that's huge. Right. Um, so there'll be more and more passenger. Could, is it general aviation now? Yes. Could it can grow that? Yes, we could do anything we want. So we could throw cargo, we could throw passengers at San Bernardino International Airport. Mm -hmm. They spent a lot of money building a terminal there right, for that. Right, of course. Um, but, you know, right now there's not a demand for it. So as Ontario takes more shape over the next 10 years, right. There'll be, uh, be obvious demand for that. So, what are the plans to try to increase your passenger count? I presume you can decrease landing fees, but what else can you do to lure people? Yeah. To well, here's a couple of interesting things. First of all, uh, the the landing fees are are a function of the operational cost of the airport. So okay. we need to get the control down, cost down. But also, the more activity we have for development and other things on that airport brings that operational cost down too. Okay. So if I lease out a piece of property over here that offsets my operational cost to I run understand. the terminal. So that will bring the price down, which will bring more attraction to that airport automatically. And then obviously we're going to do a big PR campaign and say what our plans are, right. get some airlines excited about being partners with us, develop a, you know, can you imagine a, a four-story brand new uh, international terminal right. that blows everything else away in the West Coast. And what about c convention hotels around We have Ontario. quite a few hotels, but there's obviously more that could be on the airport proper. Mm -hmm. um, we already have a convention center. We have an entertainment center. Near? I'm trying to remember. Yeah. yeah, it's right yeah, there. Right there. So, um, yeah, there's there's a lot of things that can happen there. We'll go into marketing. But first is get, get the vision up, make the plan. There's some people been knocking on the door for LA for a lot, for 10 years right. saying we want to come on that airport, you know, developers and others to develop other parts of it. So it's trying to get a handle on that, make sure we don't make a wrong decision as we grow, sure. make sure it's all planned and structured. Um, but I think there's a lot of potential there. Congrats. I know you've been working so hard for this. I congratulate you, first. the entire Inland Empire community. Ontario Airport is now in local control. We'll see what happens in the next few years. His name is Kurt Hagman. He is a member of the Board of Supervisors in San Bernardino County. My name is Brad Pomerantz, and this is Charter Local Edition.